Okay, I'd like to talk first, like when I was thinking about how I could present this, what came to my attention, it was A Tale of Two Cities. That first chapter, it really describes the law of duality. Law of duality, the purpose of that, the universal law, is to show the beauty of coming together after being separated. It really shows the relationship of the lover and the beloved. Because in this physical perspective, we experience what we call suffering. And then later experience bliss, or joy, or happiness. But it's all part of the experience, the human experience. Anyways, I want to read the first chapter to you guys. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. In short, the period was so far like the present period that some of its noisiest authorities insisted on its being received for good or for evil in the superlative degree of comparison only. That's beautiful. Poetry. Wow, Charles Dickens really had a way with words. Much like... Rumi, the poet that everyone's very familiar with. There are tons of people, tons of inspirational people. Okay? Just look out there. I mean, the world is beautiful. It's amazing. Where are you directing your attention? See, this also describes what we're experiencing right now in present society. Like, oh, Trump is president. Oh, my God. Well, then... Oh God, things are going to go wrong. What's happening? I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm worried. I'm looking on Facebook and constantly I'm seeing, oh, love and light. It's time for us to be together. And so, we were always together. When, when were we not together? And, and before it was, oh, Hillary and all these stuff. And now everyone's like, oh my God, what's going on? There's a state of crisis. Now this is opportune time. In a state of crisis, only two things are going to happen. Many, well, change is what happens. So, if you think of people, when they're in a state of crisis, when then things are going down, what do people do? Either commit suicide or completely change their lifestyle and revolutionize their experience. Either way, it's a forceful change. And that uncomfortable feeling you have is just resistance to change. Now, I'm going to move on to what I intended on presenting to you guys which is my favorite passage within the Bible. The Bible is a religious text. And uh, at the School of Metaphysics, where I've been studying consistently now for more than a year, it's the longest commitment I've ever had. It's beautiful. It's amazing. We interpret religious texts like the Bible, the Dhammapada, the Tao Te Ching in the universal language of mind. The universal language of mind is a system of language and subconscious language, which is in images and emotions. That's kind of how I experience things nowadays. I don't really think logically here. What is? What do I even know? I know nothing. I can always learn more. I focus on how I feel, the emotions. Oh, I gotta go do that. Why? Don't think that. Just go do it. Because your subconscious is your older and wiser part of your mind. Your conscious mind is learning. It's like the student learning from the teacher. Always trust your feeling, trust your gut instinct, but discern when it's actually your soul or your subconscious and when it's your, your gut brain, which is your ego, which is like, oh, I'm not feeling good. This is bad. No, you're not feeling good. It might be a chance for you to say, hey, pay attention. Something is here for you to experience for your soul growth and spiritual development. So without further ado, let me talk about the Matthew chapter 25 to 34 
sorry, do not worry. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers in the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of heaven and His righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And this is the New International Version. There's many versions of the Bible. But uh, I love this passage because it, it's the universal truth. But it shows, reveals universal laws, many universal laws. One of my favorite, the law of divine birthright. Your divine birthright is your essence, which is you deserve to experience abundance and prosperity and be in alignment with universal law in all your experiences. That's how you naturally are. So where does all this disharmony and disparity come from? Ah, that is what you're conditioned to believe. So uh, what do I mean by direct your attention to the greater good? Do I mean just Jill Stein? No, but that's a person who I was able to direct my attention to productively because she was on the ballot and I really trusted and I, I really appreciated what she had to say about the current topics. But was I expecting her to get elected president? No. What was I doing? I was productively directing my conscious mind to the greater good, which is what we have. Voting is a right. It's our duty as Americans. It's our divine birthright. So all those of you didn't go to voting, you didn't exercise that right. You can say it doesn't matter, but in a grand scale, it does. Okay, you're looking at the little tiny details, but in the big picture, it does. Think of your influence. Even right now, people are thinking, oh my God, Trump is president. And then there are riots going all over the place. People burning flags and killing people. What is going on? Is that who we are? Is that what, is that, isn't that what Trump represented in, in his campaign? All this violence? What's, where the, all, where's love and co coming from? So, and what's, what's, what's more important? What's happening? You're doing all these political schemes. There's always something bigger happening. What's happening at the Dakota Access Pipeline? So, once again, I urge you, I implore you to direct your attention to the greater good, the ideal. The ideal is the highest way you see yourself, the greatest thing that can happen. Because it's, the change starts with you. So my ideal is, wow, what if Trump, okay, what if Trump decides to, with his overinflated ego, what if he's like, and this is the funniest thing I can think of, what if he's like, okay, you know what? I gotta say this, all the attention right now it has to stop for the Dakota Access Pipeline because that's not important to me. Leave the Indians alone, okay? Leave the Native Americans alone. They're, they're the true Americans. Leave them alone, okay? What is most important is I must be immortalized in Mount Rushmore. And he takes all the workers there and hires them to work on creating a giant face of himself immortalized in Mount Rushmore, okay? That would be the funniest thing I could think of because... 
This is me, the metaphysical adventurer, experiencing life as a dream. Wouldn't that be... I mean, it's not saying that it's a weird direction of our resources, but wouldn't that be funny? Wouldn't that be a lot more valuable and interesting to see than this resistance we're putting our attention to? Think about that. And stay inspired. Keep your attention on the most high, which is your inner self. When they say God, it's not the dude sitting up there with the like like the beard and like all the shit. It's 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 your self, your high self that always knows. That's always been with you. Think about it. You've experienced this before. With Bush, people are like, oh Bush stepped down. This is the worst thing that could happen. We're still here. Oh Obama. Thanks, Obama. We're still here. With all the shit that's happened, America is still here. How can one person, how can Trump cause the collapse of an entire nation? No, Trump is not in charge of the nation. Your directed will and desire is. The people are. We can change government. Remember what happened. There was even a great example of this. Is even in our history books. We learned this in U.S. history. Do you guys remember it? This is you utilizing your memory productively. People banded together like no other time and caused a change even within the U.S. Constitution. Have you heard of something like this? Prohibition. Literally, all this stuff. Alcohol. That's the funny thing. People were like, not, not human rights, not... You know, n n not all the important stuff that, like, really affects you. But, oh, shit, you're stopping me from drinking. You're stopping my sports. You're stopping my freedom, my guns. That's unacceptable. That's unalienable in our Bill of Rights. And the government's like, oh, screw you. We're going to put it in the Constitution. What do people do? They bootlegged it. They created their own. The people were so strong, the government was not able to stop them. They even had to repeal the amendment from the Constitution. That shows you your power. Realize your influence and take responsibility. This is an example of how to productively use social media. More stuff coming like this. Okay? You can use social media productively. Get out there and talk about all the amazing things you're experiencing. Share positive emotions. Direct your attention to the greater good because that's how to productively come into harmony with the universal law of attraction. Because the law of attraction doesn't focus on, oh, what you don't want or what you don't want. It just focuses on what's in your attention. And says, hey, let me bring that to you because that's what you're thinking about. So let me, literally, you're manifesting the dream. So let me think about that and let me bring that to you. So, what will happen? What will happen if everyone just manifests that ideal? Manifest the greatest thing that could happen. You know, I'm excited. I'm, this is like, because... Whatever happens out there is not going to affect me whatever happens in here, you know? Put your attention away from all these physical things. Oh shit, you got to go to work. You got to pay the bills. Wow, what happens if you don't have work? What do you do? Pray. Woo, you're still back to God. What, remember the essence. Remember the essence. Seek first, this is a complete law. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be given unto you. What is that? There's a greater plan. There's a greater plan. There's always been a greater plan. And it's, you're seeing it in action now. Your conscious mind may not recognize it. That's why you're, oh my God, freaking out. But this is a great time to actually come together and meditate. Look deep within and realize and really contemplate why are things happening. Not just an election you experienced last night, but within the entire world, all these things are happening. Just ponder that. Stop working. Stop looking on YouTube for these random cat videos and shit like that. And start looking inside for the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Thank you so much for this time and attention. Your most valuable commodity. Sharing that by giving me your attention. And definitely more things like this to come. I would love to see people utilizing Facebook Live for endeavors like this. So make it happen. I love you all. I've nonstop love.
okay, when you reach a certain point in meditation and everything else just dissolves. It's like Rumi says, you get drunk on that divine wine, you know, and then nothing else matters. People can spit on you, do whatever. People can say, oh, you, you don't know anything, do whatever. Same thing happened with Jesus, but he was drunk on that divine wine. So choose your actions purposefully. Direct your desires willfully and stay magical.